A number of people as they get older develop a thing called restless leg syndrome and it's pretty common. And then the question is, is it more common across brain diseases? And there was some thinking that perhaps restless leg syndrome is more common in things like Parkinson's disease. However, the trials, the research that's been done looking at that question really hasn't been that clear cut. So it is difficult to say, yes, you have your restless leg syndrome because of Parkinson's or because of any other disease of the brain. But restless legs are very common uh, features and what people experience with restless leg syndrome is generally in the evening when they're going to bed, they feel as though their legs want to move. They can't get comfortable. There's this constant need to, if you like, move the legs. And often patients will say, I need to get up, I need to walk around, I need to try and relieve my legs. It isn't because they're in pain, because of cramp, it isn't because the feet are icy cold. It's just that feeling that they have to move. And that's very typical in restless leg syndrome and occasionally can break into the daytime when patients are just sitting down during the day and not doing too much or even driving. And very rarely you can see people who have restless arm syndrome where they, they have the same experience but in their upper limbs. The cause of restless legs, we're not really sure. We, we believe it relates to some abnormality in the circuitry of the brain but we've never found a structural or a chemical cause for restless leg syndrome. What we do know is there are some things that seem to aggravate restless leg syndrome, maybe even cause restless leg syndrome. So poor circulation to the feet, some damage to the nerve fibers again in the feet, um, and also things like iron uh, deficiency seems to be a, a problem that can trigger restless legs. So there are things that we need to screen for um, in patients who have restless leg syndrome. In terms of treatment, um, obviously if there's something you screen for and you find, then you might want to treat that first. But in terms of the drug therapies for restless leg syndrome with self, we generally break them into dopaminergic approaches and non-dopaminergic approaches. So the dopaminergic approaches, traditionally, we used to use levodopa. But in actual fact, it seems that more effective than levodopa are the dopamine agonists. So these are drugs like pramipexol or rotigotine uh, that are available here in Australia. And these drugs can be used in people who have pure restless leg syndrome, usually at much lower doses. And of course, in people with Parkinson's disease, they're often already on those drugs. So what about other classes of drugs that can be used? Well, um, there is evidence to support the codeine-based therapies, and obviously Australia's prescribing of codeine is changing, so this is now going to require a uh, prescription uh, to, to access. And combination drugs where the codeine-based product is actually um, bound in with something that's going to protect the brain from becoming, if you like, intoxicated by the codeine. And then there's a class of drug uh, which really comes from the epilepsy world. And probably the commonest drug that we use here is a drug called pregabalin. Uh, gabapentin was the, the epilepsy drug before pregabalin, um, but we actually, um, if you like, reformulated it. Both of these medications are still used for epilepsy, but commonly pregabalin can be used for patients who have restless leg syndrome, often in much lower doses that we see being used in epilepsy. But of course, as a drug that can affect the brain, we know that one of the biggest side effects just like all of the other drugs we use for restless leg syndrome, is being sleepy during the day. So if you are someone who's experiencing restless leg syndrome and you happen to have one of the other brain diseases, it needs to be weighed up very carefully and in a discussion with your GP and your specialist.